G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. What diagnostic delight do I have in the workshop for you today? Well, it's a Holden Captiva 2013 model with a 2.4 litre engine in it. That's a petrol engine in case you're interested. So what's it in here for? Well, it's got the dollar sign stuck on the dash. What's wrong with it? Let's check it out. vehicle was bought in for a service recently and I noticed the check engine light was on the dash the big dollar sign that is and the customer actually thought that that was part of the service it's due for a service the check engine light came on I said no 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 have a think about it check engine light so we need to check something don't we so let's start it up and see prove the customer's complaint there and we'll wait for all those other lights to go out and the fella that's left is that bloke right there. Okay, so check engine light, we need to hook up the scan tool. These are classified as a Captiva 7, and I want to do a full system search because you just never know. There might be something lurking in the background, but we'll just wait for this to go through. Um, look, looks like we've got 16 systems there, and we'll have a look at those results when they come in. Okay, it's gone through a full scan, and it looks like Yep, we've just got some in the control module, engine control module that is. And let's have a look, we've got four there though. Hmm, looks like they're all related, okay. So intake cam position sensor. We've got a P0010, 0011, 0013, 0014, that's bingo. And it all looks like they relate to the same thing. The camshaft position solenoid valve. Um, both on the intake and the exhaust system there, as you can see. I'm under the bonnet now, and as you can see, I've got my uh, fault codes listed here, but I'm going to sneak over to the side and hit actuations test. Now, we should be able to uh, cruise along here. There's our position sensor solenoid valve, or our exhaust camshaft position sensor, and I can actually select it, and hopefully I should be able to turn it off and on. Generally, generally with a solenoid, you should be able to hear it, come off and on. So listen very carefully. I can't hear anything there. Let's cancel that one. Let's try the, whoops, intake camshaft and see if that's any different. I can't hear anything there. Generally with a solenoid you'll hear a little click. Now I can't hear anything. So we need to investigate further. I found this link online that's really good for Holden Captivas. I'll probably put the link in the description. But if we have a look at our diagnostic trouble codes, uh, the uh, P0010 or the 13, but that still applies for the other two that are listed. It's just on the uh, uh, inlet side of things or the exhaust side of things. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see that these fault codes are listed as type B diagnostic trouble codes. Type B, you say? Hmm. What is that? Fault codes are broken down into types. Type A, Type B, Type C, and over the top here, uh, where are we? There, Type D. Um, type C is not listed on this particular page for some reason, but you can see it's an emissions related fault code. It's armed after one trip with a fail, disarmed with a successful pass. It will bring on the check engine light on the second consecutive fail. Uh, it puts in a history fault uh, or a fault code. Uh, has some freeze frame attached to it. There's some other details down the bottom here as well. The main thing we need to be aware of is that it's emissions related and that it will bring on the check engine light with a second consecutive fail. Well, that's fine, but what is variable camshaft timing? Basically put, it's an electro-hydraulic operated device. So in other words, it moves hydraulics or oil in our case by means of a solenoid or an electrically controlled solenoid. And what it does is allow earlier or later intake and exhaust valve operating during the cycle. The reason that we do that is to obtain better emissions. Uh, what else do we have? Broader torque range, so more power and fuel economy. So it's fairly common nowadays that we see this, but in our case, uh, it's failed. I'll show you in detail later on, but according to the paperwork here, the engine control module, the ECM, sends out usually a pulse width modulated signal 
to an actuator solenoid which allows oil to come in one side of the phaser or the other side of the phaser allowing the camshaft to advance or retard. So what is a phaser? Well there's our camshaft there and bolted on the front of it is our phaser. So what's buried deep inside? Let's have a look at it. The camshaft and the actuator can move independent of one another but right at the moment they're held together by a locking pin. So to make things a little clearer I'm going to pull the actuator off the actual camshaft itself. So once we pull that off we've got our plate off the front you can see the actuator or the phase assembly itself. I'm going to pull the whole thing off the camshaft as well so that we can see how it moves independent of one another. The phaser is made up of two distinct parts, the inner housing and the outer housing. Now the inner housing is bolted directly to the camshaft itself. You can see that on the front of the camshaft there's a couple of locating pins which line up with these locating pins here and here. As I said before the whole thing is locked together at the moment but that's because of a locking pin, this fella here, which is forced out when it wants to be activated by the ECU, by oil pressure in fact. Let's remove that locking pin. Okay, so that's all it is, a locking pin, and that goes into that hole just there to, to lock the whole assembly together. Once the locking pin is removed, the ECU can put oil in here or on the other side of that. Just allow me to turn that, hopefully, like that and oil can come in this way. What does that do? Well, it advances or retards the valve timing. Remember, this side of the phaser has the timing chain attached to it. That's not going to alter, but this side over here can alter, depending on whether oil is put in here or on the other side. Let me show you. It'll turn it around that way. That will allow either advancing or retarding of the valve timing. Let's pull that apart just a touch more. You can see it's a very tight, fit. Oil has to go in there through various galleries. If we have a look at the back there, you can see that there's a hole in through here. You can see that hole in there. That pushes in through here, which allows oil to come in through this little hole over here. You can see daylight through there, I assume. Hello! And that will allow oil to pass in through either this side of the phaser or the other side of the phaser, allowing it to rotate and of course, depending on how much oil is put on this side or this side, that will determine how much valve timing is advanced or retarded. And that's what those solenoids do. They are driven by a pulse width modulated signal from the ECU, which allows either a large amount of oil to pass or a little amount of oil to pass. And of course, either on this side or that side. If the ECU determines that valve timing does not need to be advanced or retarded, it will pop this locking pin back into place. An example of that might be when the engine is warming up. So those solenoids are crucial to make this phaser work correctly. And in the case of our Captiva, they're not working. One thing the customer did tell me, and it's recorded in their service book, the fact that they had the timing chain replaced. Now apparently it was rattling pretty bad, and those solenoids would have had to been removed to carry out that process. So whether something wasn't put back together right or not, or maybe it's just a coincidence, I don't know. But let's have a look under the bonnet and see. So for starters, what we're going to have to do is remove the intake uh, ducting system here, as well as the engine cover. There are actually four screws that hold in the air box here. One, uh, two, three, and someone has nicely left out that fourth one there because obviously they put this back on and didn't want to put the screw back in. I'll put a new one in when I get it back together, but that air box can come off. To get the connector off the mass airflow sensor, this little white section or gray or whatever you want to call it needs to be pushed back a little bit. We get him like that, it's just a locking tab once that gets pulled back, we should be able to push down on this black bit and then wiggle him off like that. I've removed this ducting entirely just to make it easier for you guys to see. That should pop off now. Next on the list, we have to remove this big sucker here. Sometimes they're called a Helmholtz chamber. What it's designed to do is reduce noise and also pulsations within the engine. As the piston goes up and down, it creates all sorts of variance and uh, pulsations that this helps to equalize 
and also it keeps the engine noise down as well. Sometimes they're called a air dampener. I didn't really need to remove this air filter box assembly. I did it for filming purposes. So these two guys are the ones that need to be dislodged from their locating pins, that one there and that one right over there. So you simply lift the thing up, pull it up this way and it should go click click and pull out. At the front of that big sucker there, you'll need to dive down here and undo this screw here, which is holding the ducting that goes into the intake system. So don't just yank it off, undo that screw there, that clamp, and that should release this section, or that should release this section a lot easier. So if we just reach over and uh, pull him up like that. Oh, one other thing I forgot to tell you is we need to get rid of this fella right here. It's not hard to do, but it is in there a little bit tight. So we need to get in there, just give it a bit of wigglage and it should pop out. A lot of uh, water and stuff in there. And we'll check that out later on. That hose clamp is next, that bloke right there. We'll get that undone and that should pull the whole lot off together. So now the whole air box assembly should be able to be pulled off like that. And she's out the road. To remove our engine cover, we'll need to remove the oil filler cap. That's partially what's holding it down. Whoops, we get him off to one side. We should be able to lift this up like DOS and like, mm, come on fella, boink and boink. There we go, no probs. These are our two cam actuator solenoids. And as you can see here, inlet and exhaust. So for starters, what I wanna do is remove these. I'll take a photo first of how they're actually located at the moment, but I wanna do some resistance checks on the solenoids themselves. You can clearly see that they are a different color. The inlet one is gray, the exhaust one is black. Is that correct? Let's check for a start before we go any further. I've just brought up a random website searching for the variable valve timing solenoid, and we can see this one here says, suits inlet side gray plug. So as you can see, it says inlet right here, and we have the gray plug. So that's correct, they ran the right way. Although I was a little concerned about whether these wiring connectors uh, were installed correctly, I didn't need to worry, because in actual fact, they only go one way. You can see this little uh, piece that sticks out, this ledge that sticks out. On the gray one, it's on the center. The purple one is right up the top. They can only go one way. Another way I've noticed is that this one here is gray, and the intake one is gray as well. That's how they're connected. I'm now gonna check the resistance of the solenoids. And as you can see here, it should be roughly five to nine ohms, something along those lines. Certainly shouldn't be too high, so let's check it. I've just put on a couple of extension pieces of wire onto my solenoid here, so it's easier to hook up my multimeter. I've got it on the ohm range here, and I have in fact, what was it? Five to nine ohms, and I have 46 kilo ohms. No wonder the poor thing doesn't work. It's broken down internally. That was the inlet side of things. Let's check the exhaust. Oh, God, this guy's even worse. I'm now on the exhaust side of things, and you can see 2.76 mega ohms. That's a million ohms, guys. Both of these solenoids need replacement. Surprise, surprise, I was able to get some in stock. These were around about half the price of genuine. And yes, I can see they're made in China. I'm not blind, but hey, what isn't made in China nowadays? And you can get some good stuff out of there. You just gotta be careful. Goss is a well-known brand, so I'm quite happy to use their products. So we're just gonna give her a bit of compressed air just to clear out that area. We'll start with a gray one here. No real reason. That of course is the inlet one. 10 mil socket or 10 mil bolt on there. Just pull him out. Now, it might require some jigglage. I feel very confident that it will require a little bit of jigglage. That being said, perhaps a pair of multi-grips might uh, just maneuver it a little bit. and Give that a burl, hey. Ah. There we go. There's our fella in question. Oh, oh. Look at the gunk built up there, hey? Look at that, that's disgusting. There's no way, <laughs> oh goodness me. That is knackered, mate. That's not good at all. I'm concerned about that, actually. Uh, remember the timing chain was done? There seems to be a bit of metal in there as well, doesn't there? That's a worry. I might get some compressed air and blow in through the oil gallery that's down there as well, uh, just to see if that'll make any difference. Just in through that gallery there. Just 
try and clean up around there so those uh, o-rings don't get damaged when I put the new one in. I've just compared it to the old one, the new one compared to the old one and they are the same. No problems, I'm just going to put a bit of oil on this o-ring right here to stop any leaks and make sure it goes in easily. Slide him into place. There we go. That's better. It's just sitting up proud, just a touch. It was a bit proud. And now that's pulling in nice. One ugga dugger, or half an ugga dugger in this case. Let's try our exhaust one. Oh, that hit the floor anyway, that's fine. Bet you this is full of crud as well. Look at that. Look at that. All that build up there. That's pretty gross, hey? Just make sure that that's clean. So perhaps the uh, timing chain that they replaced was in a little worse condition than they thought. Uh, there was certainly a lot of metal floating around in there, which is really a concern. I'll make the customer aware of this. She said that even though the check engine light was on, there was no driving issues. But clearly these solenoids would not operate whatsoever. They'd start off by mechanically not working because they'd be full of gunk. The current would go through the roof as it tries to move the pintle and eventually it would break down inside, creating high resistance, which is what we see. I'll notify the customer of the metal. I'll take photos and show her as well. And we'll make sure that this is pushed down all the way. There it goes. Okay, now before I do anything further, or before I put it all back together, I'd like to check the resistances on these new guys in comparison to the old ones. They said five to nine, didn't they? We've got roughly around about nine, so I'm happy with that one. Let's try the uh, exhaust side of things. Same with that guy, we're looking at about 9.8. In this case, I'm happy that they're equal and they're within the range that they should be. Time to put our connectors back on. And remember, they can't go in the wrong spot because they, the connectors themselves are physically different. Job's done there. Now it's time to assemble the engine, all the covers and that sort of stuff. We're now ready for the engine cover to go on. And to do that, I need to remove my oil filler cap. I put that on before just to keep any dirt, etc., out while I was working on the engine. So let's plonk that into place. Now there's three uh, posts or knobby things that you need to locate with the grommets in the engine cover. So one here, one here, one over here. They go into the grommets on the engine cover. One here, and then two over this side. One here and one up the top there. So we simply flip him over. Uh, make sure you tuck yourself in behind that. Line that up, line that up, and job's done. Oil filler cap goes in. Right, that big chamber, the air box, needs to go on next. There seems to be a fair bit of uh, water built up inside of here. Look at that. Um, I'm wondering if the PCV valve is not working properly. We'll have to discuss it with the customer and uh, they can decide what they want to do about it. Yeah, <laughs> water injection, guys. To put our air box back into place, we need to hook up these little grommets on either side here and here into these posts, these knobby looking things over here and here, and then we have to put it into the throttle body. You can see I've got a rag over it to keep dirt out, get rid of that fella, then we can line it up. So we put our little knobby bits over here and here, on the back there, push it down, clunk and clunk, and then we need to line up our throttle body downstairs. So as you can see, it's misaligned, it just needs to be pulled forward like that and then push down. And of course, don't forget this clamp needs to be tightened up down here. Don't forget this fella needs to go in. He's a bit of a wiggly jiggly fella. There he goes. Your air box goes in next. Make sure you line your filter up. And remember there's four uh, screws to go in, one hidden back here. And don't forget our mass airflow sensor connector. That needs to go on when it wants to, that is. There we go. And don't forget that little gray connector goes forward. That's a locking connector. Okay, we've got our intake ducting to go from here to here. All right, let's tighten those suckers up and then we're almost ready to have a look at those codes, clear the codes, make sure we can activate the solenoids and um, 
hopefully hear them working. I'm under the bonnet with my scan tool, and as you can see, I've got my actuations test up again. Exhaust, camshaft position, actuator solenoid valve. Now, I'm just gonna get my uh, microphone down near it because you probably can't hear it otherwise. Okay, we have to be very quiet. We're chasing rabbits. So have a listen. Can you hear that? Right, so that's our exhaust one. I'm happy with that. Let's try our inlet one. Uh, where are we? Select, on, listen carefully. Yep, happy with that one as well. I'm just gonna clear those codes. So I've done another scan and you can see that there's no fault codes. I guess we need to take it for a road test and just make sure no fault codes come back. I'm in live data at the moment and I'm just checking my exhaust camshaft position command uh, against the position itself uh, as together with the intake side of things. If we have a look there you can see zero and zero. Their percentage, they're a little bit harder to read. This is in degrees so we've got our desired exhaust and our exhaust position is zero as well. If we rev it up a little bit, we have a look here, uh, exhaust desired and the actual position are pretty much spot on and our intake position is uh, advanced this will be uh, zero compared to zero and if we change them they correspond to one another and down here we have uh, the variance and they appear to be okay and if we sneak over behind there the dollar sign is gone sweet time for a road test Back from a road test done and dusted, I've re-scanned the entire systems, no fault codes whatsoever, and I've also been able to hear the little actuations, the solenoids clicking in and out very clearly now that the oil is hot. I am a little concerned about the amount of metal shards that are floating around in the old solenoids, so I might speak to the customer about doing another oil change, perhaps in the near future, to try and flush out any residue that's left there. I hope you got something from this video today. Guys, plenty of fault codes, but ultimately it was just those two solenoids that were at fault. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like and feel free to comment down below. Don't forget about that notification bell. You don't wanna miss any future videos. So guys, until next time, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.